We were just there. I told you earlier this morning about the liturgical reality that we are taken out of time and made present to the event in which we celebrate. We were just there. We're still there. And it's uh, a, a powerful thing to remember. It's a wonderful thing to be able to do this on a retreat so that we can do the long version and enter into it without feeling pressed by the next mass or whatever. So uh, we did the long version of the gospel today, and it's different, huh? When you have space to ramp up and get into this reality of being in the presence of what happened to Jesus 2,000 years ago. No? As I was praying through the scriptures for today in this uh, last this, this homily, which will be brief because we've heard much and the Lord, I can't speak more than what the Lord has said, you know, but I was reminded of an image I may have used on Friday night. Imagine if you were to come to your home, which you've built up over years and decorated just so and got it all nice and neat, and you come home and everything's topsy-turvy. All the furniture's upside down, the, the pictures are off the wall. You'd be shocked, right? Unless you found your wife or your husband in there with a broom and a mop, <laughs> right? Then you would all of a sudden realize, oh, this isn't a disaster. There's purpose to this. We've, Good Friday is the disaster that Satan wants to create. Good Friday is his plan. But Good Friday is also part of God's plan. And if God lets Satan kick over all the furniture, it's because the Lord wants the furniture kicked over so that the Lord can do a deep clean. We spoke on Friday, Saturday morning about the situation at hand and where we are in this moment of salvation history. It really doesn't matter where we are. Good Friday comes, the cross comes for every individual soul and every life. We all suffer. We all have the cross at some point. And it always looks like a disaster from a human perspective. But when we hold on to the reality that, that as, as much sound and fury as the devil can kick up and all the dust and all the noise and all the brass and all the sound and all the flash and bang, if the Lord allows him to do that, it's because the Lord allows him to do that for a purpose well beyond what the enemy can even think of. Ours is to keep the hope and the understanding that every cross, that God is in the business of turning every cross, if we let him, into a resurrection. You see, when we come into that house and we come into our personal cross or we come into the Good Friday of what our society seems to be going through and marching towards the various prophecies that are of Our Lady that I've spoken of, right, and of, and of others, it looks like a disaster, humanly speaking, but there's purpose to it. And if we know there's purpose in a plan, then of what we, do we need to be afraid? Listen to these words. Those who pray... Do not fear the future and do not lose hope. You, you, each one of you, are chosen to carry joy and peace because you are mine. The devil wants peacelessness and war and he will fill your heart with fear of the future, but the future is God's. Surrender everything to the Most High. We've been talking about the situation in which our world is in. How long it will take to play out? Who cares? It doesn't really matter. Every single individual soul has to go and follow his Lord or her Lord to the cross and to the resurrection. We live what we just experienced in the liturgy, everyone as individuals in one way or the other uniquely and as a society and as a church. And if we keep our focus on the Lord, if we become men and women who are not people with a prayer life, but people with a life of prayer, then we have hope in the midst of anything that comes our way. Anything that comes our way. Anything. Nothing can daunt us if we have that heart-to-heart -heart connection with the Lord day by day, moment by moment. Nothing. That's the goal. The enemy may have his global reset that he's trying to kick up around, right? But Our Lady has hers. Our Lady has her global reset. 
She wants, she's going to triumph. Her Immaculate Heart will triumph. I offer one prayer for you to hold on to, and I've found it to be quite efficacious in my own heart. When faced with the, and you've all experienced, I've heard you talk about it, the division that comes through all the fear that everybody's experiencing in society, in the church, and around, and in families, division, fear, fear of death, in the face of all that, pray very simply, Jesus, give me the grace to hope and trust in your plan. You see, the devil has been crafting for centuries his modern-day Tower of Babel, and we can point out all the things that we, we touched on on Saturday morning, on many of the things of which that consists. It doesn't matter what he's doing. The Tower of Babel will be dynamited by good, faithful Christians following the Lord's promptings. How that works out, I don't know. <laughs> but I know the Lord's got a plan. Our part is simply to be open, to be people who are vibrant in their prayer life or have a life of prayer, and He will tell us what to do and when to do it. Very simple, very simple, not complicated, and actually not that hard. Ours is simply to do it, to enter into that relationship. Pray for the grace to hope and trust in His plan through all of this. Ask others to pray the same, because when we're hoping and we're trusting, and we have that grace to hope and trust, then whatever is facing us, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't get a hold on us. We're like Teflon. <laughs> you know, the fear doesn't catch the heart, right? It just passes by. It's like, okay, well, you know, whatever. Whatever you're saying, I can tell that that's a lie. I'm going to live by the truth because the Lord is my truth. He is the truth, and he's teaching me to walk this way, to be more human and not less, to embrace, to love, to invite people to the truth. Pray for the grace to hope and trust in the plan that Jesus has in this time, in your life, and be not afraid. How many times in Scripture, I know some of you know this, how many times in Scripture does it say, be not afraid? 365, one for each day. May Jesus Christ be praised now and forever.